Hey everybody, it's Bruce at Groxio Learning and we're going to start our series on Tetris. We have three goals for you. We're basically going to learn a little bit of live view, but we also think it's a great idea to learn a little elixir along the way because some of you might know it very well or might not know all the tips and tricks. And the third thing is that we think that there's a lot of work that we can do around building our software in layers. So we'll talk about some of the techniques to get that done. As we get started, we are going to start with a concept of a point. Now, you might not think that this is the best place to start for a Tetris game. You might want to start a little bit bigger, but I'd like to basically introduce a few concepts so that when we have this point, we're going to have a data structure called a point, and we're going to write these functions on it called reducers, where a reducer takes one point, and then we can decide to transform it. For example, move it to the right, or move it to the left, or move it down. So that's where we're going to get started, and I hope you enjoy yourself. We're actually going to build this application in a web framework called Phoenix, and we're going to use a feature called Live View. Now, if you haven't seen it before, Phoenix is a web server that allows you to build highly interactive flows, and Live View is a way of doing that without writing any custom JavaScript, or very little of it. And so what we're going to do is build a programming model, and we're going to feed that programming model into a function called Render, and then we'll use the Phoenix side rather than the client side to change that model over time and get and get uh, user inputs and modify that state. So you'll see how that works. But strangely enough, most of our work is going to be on the game mechanics. And if you think about it, that's exactly the way that we want it. The less time that you spend managing the ceremony of programming for the web, the better off you're going to be in terms of the application that you produce. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to type mix phoenix.new and I'm going to say Tetris, the name of the application. And we're going to create, the, we're going to throw in the switch to create the live view extensions. So it's going to ask me if I want my dependencies and Phoenix doesn't want to recreate the whole ecosystem for dealing with assets like the node package manager and things like that. So it's going to go ahead and pull that stuff down. And as it does, what it's effectively doing is building the system JavaScript that we're going to need and um, packaging that up um, and, and moving that into a structure that we can use. And one of the things that you'll notice that's happening here is that we have a we're, we've got this web pack and we're we're installing it in development mode. And that means that as we change our assets, there's a watcher that's sitting there that's actually going to uh, restart our server when we want it to be. But we're not going to need that right away because we're going to start with some of the basics. So. We're going to go ahead and it asked us to um, to jump in here and create a database. I'm not sure if we'll need it, but we'll go ahead and type that anyway. Mix ecto.create. We might track high scores or something like that. Um, oh, I need to change into the Tetris directory. And now I can run my mix ecto create. And it's doing that for us. And that's we're off to the races. Hey friends, Maggie here with Team Groxia. We are happy to have you joining us on our Tetris series. I'd like to invite you to come on over to Groxio, G-R-O-X dot I-O, and you can sign up for our newsletter over there and see what other content we have available for you and get some information about signing up for some training with Bruce Tate himself. We'll see you. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit that application just so you can get the lay of the land and see what's happening here. So here, here's my, here are my directories. Just as you would have with any other Elixir project, you have a build, and this is where the compiled code goes. We don't have, we don't have um, any other environments other than the development environment. That's the one that we built. When you 
are working with Phoenix, typically you're in the development mode. Um, you might run some tests and that'll compile it for a test mode. And then there's also a production mode and you can add other environments if you want to. So th these are the assets that we talked about. That's where you're going to find the HTML and, and CSS and JavaScripts. And there is some JavaScript when you're doing live view development. You just don't have to touch it very often. And then there's some configuration, the dependencies, and this is where all of the code related to Phoenix. So for example, you could see Phoenix Live View in there, and you could see Phoenix and, and the Phoenix Ecto, which is the database wrapper there. And you can also see the lib directory, and this is where our code goes. So the backend code is where we're going to live for a good long while. This is just the Tetris folder, and our tests are going to live here. So I'm going to focus on just working with the Tetris folder. And the goal here is that we're going to have a, um, we're going to use this video se series for our mentoring. And we would like to have a test suite that where people can build, can watch this video and actually build the application test first during the mentoring groups that occasionally meet. So that's why we're building it this way. And that's actually why this is a $10 product. We want our mentees to have some skin in the game, and we also want it to be at a price that everyone can afford anywhere in the world. So we're going to start this. We said we were going to start with a point. And the point is going to look like this. So def, so this is point.ex. So def module, and this is Tetris. That point. So Elixir code, you'll see that that a module is a bucket. It's a place for your code. And you'll see when you see do end, this is just a block of things that belong together. And so we're going to put functions in here. So an example of a function is maybe I have a point called origin. These are the arguments. And I want my origin to return a point. So maybe that point is 0, 0. Now this is a, a data type called a tuple. And this, this tuple is going to be returned. So in Elixir, the very last statement that's executed is the one that's returned. And so we can actually start our project like this. I'm going to say IEX hyphen S mix. And I'm going to say Tetris dot, and you can see the name of our module, Tetris dot point dot point dot. And then there's, I can tab, and that remembers, or that knows that there's only one function in there, and that's called origin. And I can put the parentheses if I want to. If I don't, Elixir um, might complain at me because functions uh, get, get arguments. And so this is going to return a particular point. And in fact, this is a special type of function that we call a constructor. So in this module, we're going to be better off if we only have three kinds of functions. So there are three types of functions that I'd like to have in this kind of module. One of them is a constructor, and this is a constructor. It might take a few arguments or maybe not, and it returns the data type for the module. And the second type of function we're going to build right now, it's called a reducer. So this is going to move a point to the left. And in fact, we're going to do we're going to do something called a pattern match. And so you can see the shape of the tuple right here. And this pattern match is going to go ahead and grab whatever x and whatever y comes in. So I can use it. And in this case, what I'd like to do is return a point that's moved to the left, which is x minus 1 and y. y stays the same. y isn't moving up and down at all. So, so in, in our game, the upper left up here is going to be 0, 0, and the lower right is going to be 10, 20. So left and right 
um, are X, and that's that's listed first, and up and down are Y, and that's listed second. And so the left hand, the upper left, is going to be zero, zero. So let's take a look at, let's recompile. And I don't want to have to, oh, it looks like I didn't save that, and I didn't, you can see the blue dot there. So I didn't save this, but let's recompile. Did I not save again? Okay. Let's see. Let's recompile. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to recompile. And you can see it compiled one file, so I'm happy with that. But I don't want to type Tetris point over and over again. So I'm going to do something called an alias. So I'm going to alias Tetris point. And now I can refer to just the last piece of that chain. And that's going to be much nicer, right? So I could say point dot origin and that's a zero zero and I can actually now move a point left so I'm going to assign a point P is equal to point dot origin now I've got a P in there and so I can say point dot left and I could and I could pass it that point up and you can see that this moved to the left Okay, that's a good start. So we can take this same code and we can move it to the right as well. But a right is actually going to return x plus 1. And we can actually move it down. And I think left, right, and down are going to be the only ones that we need. Because in Tetris, we basically move left and right, and the game moves us down. The, get, the game never moves us back up to the top. Um, in fact, we, we start each piece at the top, and it just floats down. So that's great. So let's recompile that much, and let's look at how we might be able to use these attributes. So Elixir has this operator called the pipe operator. And when you see this, think of it in terms of feeding the thing into the left into the thing on the right. So I could say, for example, point.origin. And I can feed that into point.right. OK, so now I have a point.origin, and I've fed it to the right. Now, this is not changing point.origin. This is actually taking an origin, making a copy, and building a new point that's moved one to the right. So what might I get if I start with if I start with P, which is remember the origin, and I move that right, and I move it to the right again, and then I move it down. See how I'm telling this beautiful story with code. Yeah, so now I've moved two to the right, so this is over to two, and I've moved it down one. And if I look at P, that's unchanged, because remember, each one of these is a new copy. So this is a special kind of function called a reducer. And in fact, a reducer is a function that, can, that takes some type and returns the same type transformed in some small ways. So I might have a reducer that's called add. So um, the add function might look like this. And this takes some, some um, attribute. It's the function with x and y. And one of the arguments is going to, is going to be the accumulator. Right, and then I can I could take some kind of a list, and then there's a function, and I don't want you to get tied up to the name, but enum dot reduce, and that can take this function or the list and the and a starting value of zero, and then it can take my add function, and this will add them all together. But look what's happening. So we're starting with zero, and then we're piping this to add, and we're going to add the first number. And we're piping that much to add, and we're going to add the second number, which is two, and we're piping that much to add, 
And then we add the third number, which is three. So that also gives me six. So this is interesting, right? So this is where the name reducer comes from. But it turns out that this function, the accumulator is the second argument, not the first argument. And if you don't understand all of this, it's okay. Just remember that if you have a function or if you have a module full of functions, there's a data type that's important in there. And in this one, the data type is a point and it's a tuple with two elements, right? So that has the mustaches on the side and the two elements in it. And the reducer takes a point and returns a point that's transformed in some small way. So we're going to do it over and over in this Elixir design. And when we do, Elixir is going to reward us handsomely. So this is probably a good place to stop and take stock. So think about your design in terms of Elixir, of Elixir modules that hold a common data type that have reducers over that data type and constructors. And when we do that, I can have a pipe that is shaped something like this. Uh, Point.origin to point.write to point.write to point.down. And that's an excellent thing. This is Bruce at Groxio Learning, and I'll see you in the next video.